All right, so I think it's worth giving a, a recap of the things that we've covered uh, so far in, in this unit. Uh, we've covered runge cutta methods, which uh, at least all the methods that we talked about, the runge cutta methods we talked about, were explicit methods. Uh, these were methods where uh, we could solve explicitly for the next step, given the previous step. And uh, the first one was the Euler's method. That was a first order method. Uh, the, the simplest method for for um, solving the, the uh, ordinary differential equation. And then we went on to Hahn's method, and that was the second order method. So we had first order, second order method, uh, and, and specifically the one without iteration is, is, um, is the one that we're talking about here, um, uh, because the one with iteration isn't really a runge cutta method. Um, well, maybe it is. No, it isn't. Um, so then we took talk about the third order uh, runge cutta method, um, and and we just called it that third order runge cutta method. Which so we generalized uh, from Hahn's method, and and we set up a framework for for explaining uh, and laying out the runge cutta methods in general, and then went back and explained how Hahn's method and Euler's method were actually runge cutta methods. We showed the third order runge cutta method, and then. Uh, we also showed the fourth order runge cutta methods. And then today uh, we said, well, okay, these are all fine and well, but uh, what about the step size? How do we set the step size and, and, and what can we do to, to intelligently do that? And what if we have slight changes in, you know, in the magnitude and we want to tighten up the step size for a little region? And that's where, uh, that's where the adaptive runge cutta methods come in. And there's two approaches to that, the step halving uh, where you can use the same order method, for example, the third order runge cutta method, and you could do it with, with one step size and then half the step size and do it over the same interval, and that would give you, the whole reason for doing that would give you an error estimate. Uh, and then the second method for, um, for doing adaptive runge cutta uh, to, to, because you have to come up with an error estimate would be, uh, the, it's called runge cutta Felberg methods, and those are the methods that use, um, not the uh, not the adaptive like not the step having, but what they use is they use um, they use uh, different orders. So so you might have a, a third or a fourth order, but specifically uh, the cash uh, the cash carp runge cutta method was a fourth and fifth order. It used the fourth and fifth order runge cutta methods. Um, so you know there was a fifth order, and you could go all the way up to n orders runge cutta. It uses a fourth and fifth order runge cutta methods, and it fit. It fits both the fourth and fifth because it has to do that to come up again to come up with an error estimate. So that is that is the whole thing that we've talked about with uh, the runge cutta methods, which are explicit methods. But then this problem came up where uh, if we have a stiff system, then we cannot uh, deal with it. Not with uh, the adaptive runge cutta methods, not with the non-adaptive runge cutta methods. I mean, we can, but it just take a very, very, very long time and a very small, uh, small step size. Even if the function isn't changing much, we still have to use a, so a small step size. And so this is this is problematic, and that's why we're going to introduce the next set of methods, which are the implicit solution methods uh, of solving these these ordinary differential equations.